be looking at it seems to me to be entirely selfish. It's a marvelous way of getting rid of all these feelings of resentment and hatred that you have, and at the same time, occupying a high moral ground. And I was thinking about that phrase Jesus is on the cross where when everybody was throwing stones at him and he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a brilliant line. What a put down. I mean, it's the, isn't it? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Is there anything more patronizing? It's a real off line. And there they all are. Maybe they do know what they do. Maybe they really want to throw stones. And there you are on the cross saying, Oh, you poor little sort of people, you know, badly educated, ignorant people who don't know what you do. You have the great smug satisfaction of being a great deal better than them. And that is a, a, probably the best revenge in a way. Forgiveness breaks all contact with the people you, who've done you harm. You put them into a, a box, you know, you're their wreck, really, and you're being terribly kind. So I think that on the whole, the, the best forgiveness is not a totally compassionate and kindly and Christian act. It is actually the ultimate revenge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a Chinese saying, um, if he who plots revenge should dig two graves, I think that just sums up my, my attitude to revenge. <coughs> that what it does is it gives you a temporary boost if you cut your hus ex-husband's suit up or destroy his, um, his wine cellar. You get a, you get a kind of like a, a, um, a fix, a high. And then afterwards, as Virginia said, you haven't got your husband, you've lost that. It doesn't bring the person back and there's a kind of emptiness. So I'm really quite clear that revenge doesn't work, but the attraction of it, I think, is in part, as you mentioned, Marina, about trying to deal with shame. Because when we feel we want to take revenge, it's usually at some level because we've felt shamed and powerless. And there's a very, very, we work, um, my wife and I work a lot with couples, <coughs> And there's a very interesting study to show that when there was feelings of revenge in the session with couples, there would be a sort of attack out of the blue. They videoed and they saw that there'd been a, a, a moment only caught on video where there'd been a look or some, something shaming. And so this attack didn't come out of the blue, it came as a response to being shamed. And I think the feelings of shame and helplessness are one of the biggest sources of revenge. A play that I just saw recently based on a book called A Human Being Died That Night. Some of you may know it's based on a, um, tapes of a black South African psychotherapist called uh, Pumla Madigazela with Jadine, Eugene de Kock, who was called the Prime Evil. And the writer of that play said, one of the most things that he feels is that victims and perpetrators must have some kind of reconciliation for society to move on. I wonder if the panel actually agrees with that content. I don't really like the idea that then you have to sort of force this. It's rather like when people talk about grief that you have to live through it and experience it before you can come out the other side. People are too muddly and peculiar. I think Sometimes it works that you forgive, you move on. Often it, you, you forgive one day, you remember it the next, or you, it, it, it's very patchy. Um, I'm, what I mean is it's a great muddle, and actually it's probably my answer sounds rather than a muddle, but it's not, that there aren't rules about how you move on or don't move on, it's up to individuals. For me, I think, you need to speak to the person that's done that. You need to know why. You need to know that they're sorry. That, that, so you need to see the pain that they're going through as well for what they've done, rather than they just think they've done something and they've got away with it. So for me, I think it was very important that I, I had answers and I had somebody that was there to explain why and to apologise for what they've done. Just a simple apology for me. 
So to me, I think it's very important that people ask, and also if you're, you've got any anger that you can tell that person and, and, and let them see what they've done to you, what, the, what hurt they've caused you as well. So for me, I think it's very important that the people get to do that. And when I was looking into this, I also was reading about the nomadic Bedouins who still exercise moral tradition, and they say, you know, in this tradition, if a man takes revenge after 40 years, he is in a hurry. In other words, you need to grow it. Um, and I just want from a, you know, there's a lot you can say from a political perspective, but actually from a psychological perspective, why? How can you break that cycle? It seems so difficult. I think what it does is it gives you a sense of identity and you define yourself by this. So, I was just, well, you mentioned the Bedouins, and there are nomadic people, and I'm wondering if they, they don't have buildings and so on to, to keep their traditions, so the stories will be very important. And so I think it may, part of the attraction would be that it gives them a sense of identity, which is one of the things revenge does. You define yourself against somebody else. But I don't think that's actually a long-term good solution because it's against. And what I'm interested in is how we can get to collaboration. There is a lot of evidence that victim-offender mediation really works, and that if you really wanted to um, to address the problems of the offender, bringing them face to face with their victim is very powerful. So there are alternative ways, and we obviously don't want them, because we could help the offenders. And so then we have to look at, well, why are we so, and I use the word addicted to this revenge, and it reminds me there's a book called The Crime of Punishment, um, which I think is an interesting, it was written in the 30s, by a psychiatrist called Menninger. And um, it's, it's like looking at how punishment just does not work. It does not really deal with the root cause of why somebody's done something. You can, uh, at a superficial level, stop the behavior if you're more powerful. So, but you don't really um, deal with the, with the issue. I basically want to see people happy, and I've seen people who are vengeful and not happy. And so it, it's not a should or an, a, an ought or you're a better person or a worse person. It's just that keeping on to revenge doesn't, I think, make you happy. And people who've been able, for whatever reason, to let go feel lighter. And that's what I would wish for all of us. That's as simple as that, really.